All right. Well, it is good to be in church tonight. Yes. Yes. Proverbs chapter number 16 in your Bibles. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 16. I feel like Tom Malone. <laughs> He's an old time preacher that's in heaven now. He just had a deep grumbly voice. <laughs> and so hallelujah. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 16, we're going to finish up our five part series on keep thy heart. <clears throat> we're going to talk about a prepared heart tonight. Proverbs chapter number 16, when you get there, look at verse number one with me. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 16, verse number 1, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. And Father, I pray now that you would just strengthen my voice. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just open our hearts, open our our minds to your word. Father, I pray, dear God, that we would be able to receive tonight. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just do a special work in each one of us, Lord, as we approach revival. Lord, I'm very excited about it and looking forward to it. Yes, and Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would just give us a just a wonderful time in revival during the church week. Lord, I pray you would just do a special work in each one of our hearts and lives. I pray you touch our hearts and help us. Speak and move to us, guide and direct us. Lord, as individuals, but also as a church body. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just do a special work in our community. Lord, our community is in desperate need of you. Yes. And Lord, and God, I just beg you, Lord, with, with this uh, counterculture that's just crept into our society and just the... Uh, the anti-God movement, really, Father, we just, we need you, yes. and Lord, our community needs you, and there's tons of people in Bell Fountain, Ohio, and Logan County that are lost and yes. in need of you as their Savior, Lord, and I just beg you, Lord, please work and move. Mm. I pray you'd stir. I pray you'd just sweep across our county and bring a spiritual awareness to this place once again, and Lord, just give us a revival. It'd be a wonderful yes. thing. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. I pray you'd strengthen me now as I preach your word. God directs my thoughts and my words, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you just move as only you can. You are awesome, you're powerful, and you're magnificent. Thank you for the amazing work that you do in this place on a regular basis. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, the power of his blood we plead. Amen. Amen. You know, we do a lot of time, we spend a lot of time preparing for things like preparing for food. I mean, I know I spend lots of times preparing food and, and just hours on hours. And, and so, um, well, one flesh, hello. I mean, come on, amen. I mean, man alive. Man, you think I'm going to lie in the pulpit? No way. And so anyways, preparing our food, preparing our finances for financial stability, uh, uh, spending hours in preparation to win a game like chess or a sports event like the Olympics and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, people dedicate 
every single day of their life to prepare for such things. Sometimes we'll spend uh, four to eight years in college preparing for a direction in our lives or, or doing all of those kind of things. Sometimes, you know, we'll just do all kinds of stuff in preparation. Uh, just before we ever do uh, uh, any kind of a project around the church, you know, we'll collect uh, uh, the materials and plans and we'll figure it all out, measure things out and, and do all kinds of pre preparation before we ever rip a wall out or we ever uh, uh, sink a, a single nail or a screw. There's just a lot of things that we do in preparation. The word preparation means the act or operation of preparing or fitting for a particular purpose, use, service, or condition. How much time do we spend Asking God to prepare our hearts, amen. You know, as we're talking about keeping our hearts, one of the big things about keeping our heart is asking God to, to take care of our heart and prepare our heart for the use in which God wants us to be used for, amen. First Samuel chapter number 16, verse number 7, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the what? Heart. Amen. And so God looks on the heart of man uh, to see and, and to work with man. God's desire is that we would have a prepared heart for his use. Amen. And so is God allowed to prepare your heart for the use God wants to use it for. And so notice the preparation of the heart in our text. We've already prayed, right? Yes, we did. And so number one, the first thing I want you to notice with only the Lord can properly prepare your heart. As we've looked in in the past, we've seen how that the heart, and, and you say, this is going to be repetitive. Yes, it is. Amen. And uh, uh, it'll be good to be repetitive. Amen. amen. And uh, as Joe has very thoroughly taught me, repetition is the mother of all learning. Amen. And hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so as we look at this and see this, this is good stuff. Listen, the first thing I want you to notice in only the Lord can prepare, properly prepare the heart. Verse, verse number two, look at it with me. All the ways of man are what? Clean in his own eyes. The first thing I want you to notice, we don't judge right. We don't judge right. We've got to have God's judgment on it. We've got to have God's word on it. We need God involved in this situation. Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of of death. If you're going to have proper judgment about anything in life, you better get this book in on that judgment. You better know what the Bible says. You better learn what the Bible says, and you better be willing to learn from those that know the Bible better than you know the Bible. Can I get a witness? Thank you very much. That's good. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we're all in agreement tonight. And so we don't judge right. Secondly, we don't know our own heart. And we've looked at this, Jeremiah chapter number six. 17 verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? You can't prepare something you don't know. Amen. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. So we don't know our own heart and we don't judge right only the lord can prepare the heart and we see in verse number one the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from where the lord amen all caps talking about jehovah god king of kings and lord of lords and so we see number one only the lord can properly prepare the heart but only the humble number two can have their heart properly prepared amen we talked a little bit about this this morning. Psalm chapter number 10, verse number 17. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. Can I get a witness? God's going to prepare their heart and will cause thine ear to hear. If you're seeking God and you're humble, then God will prepare your heart and God will give you ears to hear. So the humble... Listen to this, this is good. Look at verse number three. The humble commit their work to God. Commit thy works 
unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And so their work is committed to God. What you do, you do for God. Gifts, abilities, which are given uh, 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 to me are for what? Him. Are you with me? My works. Listen, not just the works that I do in church and through the church, but my works, period. Amen. It's a matter of God having your entire life. Listen, my finances aren't mine. They belong to the Lord. Amen. Hey, listen, my house is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. My car, my vehicles, it all belongs to God. Everything is God's. My works, everything that I do in my life, it belongs to God. And that's what it is. We ought to commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Listen, if you struggle mentally with your thought life, One of the big things that's going to help you with your thought life is committing your works to the Lord. What do you believe your Bible? If you believe the Bible, say amen. Amen. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. I do what I do for Jesus. I work a job. Yes, we have our needs. We've got things we've got to do and all of that other stuff. But the bottom line is, is the main purpose why I work a job and why I make money and why I do what I do is because I want God to be honored. I want to use my finances for the things of God and the causes of Jesus Christ. Amen. My works are to be committed unto the Lord. I keep a house the way I keep my house because the bottom line is, is I want God to get glory in my house. I want God to get glory in my my life. I want God to get glory in all of the things of my life. Can I get a witness? Listen, if, if we're only here on this earth for 70, 80, 90 years, 100 years, are you with me? I want everything I possibly can to go to heaven. I want everything that I do to count for eternity because I'm going to be there an awful long time. You know what I'm saying? And as a matter of fact, it's going to be so long, time doesn't even matter. And so are you with me? It's forever and ever and ever. And man, you better get to the place where you start committing your life to the the things of God, to God himself. Commit your works to the Lord. And so commit your works to the Lord. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Let's look at it. Amen. I want you to go there. And some of you in here, you need to memorize this passage. Psalm chapter number 37. I love Psalm 37. It's a great, great passage of Scripture. It's one of the ones that I learned at a very early time in my Christian life is Psalm chapter number 37 and verse number 4. We'll look at verse 4 and 5. Yeah, there certainly is, isn't there? I'm not moving at all, and it's still acting funny. Yeah, I know. It's very irritating to me. No. And so, anyways, hallelujah, glory to God. You know, it's good to have some things irritate you in your life. Amen. It's okay. Verse number four, look at it now. Look at what it says. Delight thyself also in the what? And he shall give thee the desires of thine what? Heart. Heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Listen. Now, you could take this verse two ways. You could take this verse as, you know what? I'm going to get what my heart desires when I delight in God. And that is a true statement. But before that statement is true, the other one has to be true first. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And all of a sudden, when you're loving God like you ought to, and you're delighting in the Lord, and you're delighting in your walk with God, then all of a sudden, he gives you the right desires for your heart. Amen? And then when you have those right desires, God has absolutely no problem with giving you the desires that God has given you to have in your heart. 
Now, did you get that nice circle right there that we took, that nice, cute little trip? We just took a trip around the building, and you didn't even know it. Amen? And so as we look at this and we see this, I'm telling you, God will give you the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Look at verse number five. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Can I get a witness? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Listen, when you stop and you examine that verse, you commit your way. We talked about committing our work. He says here, commit your way, the way in which you go. Are you with me? The way in which you live the way in which you work, the way in which you do everything that you do, your ways, you commit them to the Lord. And then what? Trust in him because he's going to have you go some ways that are going to be hard. Are you with me? He's going to have you take some trails that seem like, man, is there ever any downhill parts to this? This I've been going uphill for miles now, and my legs are tired. I'm tired of climbing over the rocks in the way. Are you with me? Yeah. Come on. And man, it feels like sometimes you better trust God. Yes. You're going to have to trust God when he has you do certain things while you're committing your ways unto him. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You know, when I stop and think about this, you know, there's things in the Bible that a lot of people today, they buck against. They, they get about, you know, they grumble about it, amen, they do, they, they just, uh, they, they growl about it, amen, they growl at their preacher, and uh, so anyways, listen, the bottom line is this right here, I'm telling you, you know, when we commit our ways, the Bible gives us clear direction on things, he tells us about the way we're supposed to dress, the way we're supposed to talk, he tells us about what our music is supposed to be like, and man, that's hard. But the Bible says, commit your ways. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Listen unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Because it's going to take some trust in God to do some of these things. Because doing some of these things will inevitably, every single time, cause you some ridicule. It'll cause you some some opposition in your life when it comes to family and friends and your co-workers and all of those kind of things. When you begin to change for the Lord, there will always be opposition. There's always going to be. You can just mark it down. This is what happens. And, and this is why he says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And you're just going to have to trust him through the hard moments. You're going to have to trust him that he does know what he's talking about. Amen. Amen. And just accept what this Bible says and say, yes, Lord. Can I get a witness? Amen. And so as we look at this, we see here, you're, you're to commit your work to the Lord. Somebody, the humble, commit their work to the Lord. But not only that, listen, how do you know? Because your mental stability, you know that you have done this because you are mentally stable in Christ. Can I get a witness? Not only do we see this matter of the humble commit their work to God, but the humble admit that they belong to God. Amen. They belong to God. Look at chapter number 16 with me, if you would, please look at verse number four. The Lord hath made what? All things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Listen, the humble is willing to admit that they belong to God. Amen. You say, the, the wicked and the evil, the, 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 that belongs to God? Yeah. You better believe it, amen. God, hey, listen, he is in control. And you say, well, I don't understand why God will allow evil. Listen, God has allowed evil. He does have the power to do what he wants to do. He's bound by his perfection and different things like that. And I, well, I don't understand that. Well, you know what? You are finite and he is 
infinite, and he knows better, and you're just going to have to trust God. And the humble, hey, listen, I don't have to understand everything in life. I just need to obey, Amen. trust, and obey. Amen. Can I, is there any other way? No, there isn't. Amen. And so admit that they belong to God. Isaiah 47 says this, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. You know, God, and we talked about this in VBS, God created everything for his own. Give me the pulpit mic and turn this thing off. God has created everything. He has created everything. Am I on? Okay, I'm good. God has created everything for him, for his pleasure. You say, that sounds so selfish. When you're God, you can be selfish if you want to, amen? Hey, listen, I'm here to tell you something right now. I bought me some wood and some materials, and I built me some nightstands that are on the side of my bed. And you know what? I do what I want with them. What? You're so selfish. You don't let those nightstands go where they want to go and, and do what they want. to. Nope. I put them where I want them, and they do what I want them to do. And I got a little drawer in there I built. And you know what? I put in my nightstand what I want in my nightstand. Are you with me? And you know what? God made me. I belong to him. And he can do with me as he chooses what he wants to do with me. Amen. God is good. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's good. Pray. That's good. Preaching preacher. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans eleven thirty six. Some of you have just been quiet today. VBS has wore you out and you can't even hardly say amen. And so praise the Lord. It's about time, Brother Tony. I've been waiting all day for you. And so anyways, Romans chapter number 11, verse number 36. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever and ever, well, it doesn't really say that, but it does say amen. And so forever, it's all for him. It's for him, through him, and to him amen. are all things. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. And listen, if you allow God to be in charge of your life, you will be so thankful. Yes. I'm telling you, God is good. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we see this. We see the humble commit their work to God. We see the humble admit they belong to God. We see the humble fear the punishment of God. Look at verse number five. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the what? Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Are you with me? I don't know. I, listen, we live in a messed up society. We absolutely 100% do. Man, I'm going to have to stay behind this pulpit now, aren't I? And so we, lived in, we live in a messed up society. Yes. And you know what? I don't care how many people say God is okay with homosexuality. He never will be. Are you with me? I don't care how many people say it's okay when you're a, 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 a genetically made male. You will never, ever be a female. I don't care how many people say it. I don't care how many people say that. I don't care how many laws they make to try and make that okay. They can do whatever they want. They can have all the surgeries in the world, but there is these DNA in them that is going to show that they are what they were created to be. Amen. Amen. And listen, the bottom line is this right here. Hey, listen, <laughs> and you find those people down the road, they're going to be so messed up in their head. They're going to be confused. They're going to be miserable, and they're going to be unhappy. Are you with me? And that's the truth of it. Listen, I don't know about you, but I just think that everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. And we ought to be real careful about that thing called pride. Did you see that it says abomination? That's a pretty powerful word in God's word. Go over to Proverbs chapter number, uh, what is that, six? Yeah, Proverbs chapter number six. I want you to see this. This is all free right here. I'm giving you this free. This is free. Okay. I won't charge you a penny for it. We're not going to take up an extra offering for this passage, okay? All right. 
Look at this now. Proverbs chapter number 6. Look at verse number 16. These six things doth the Lord what? Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And that's extreme hatred for. Verse number 17, a proud look. Now notice the difference between what it says over here. For everyone that is proud in his what? Heart. That's different than a proud look. Have you ever seen somebody have a proud look? Oh yeah, you can, just, you can see it very clearly. Listen, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Are you with me? Yeah. He hates these things. And heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. When he hates each and one of those things individually, but when you put them all together, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Are you with me? And he calls the seven of those together an abomination, and he calls this one thing over in Proverbs chapter number 16, a proud in heart person is an abomination. That speaks volumes to me. As a matter of fact, Somebody who is proud in heart, God, it is an abomination. And somebody who sheds innocent blood with their hands, God hates. So somebody who is proud in heart, God hates extremely. Are you with me? He hates somebody who's proud in heart more than somebody who sheds innocent blood with their hands. Think about that. That's what the Bible says. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. There is a punishment. There is a judgment. And the humble fear the punishment of God and will do things to make sure that they are not proud in heart. Can I get a witness? Come on. Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 16. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. James chapter number 4, verse number 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the who? Humble, amen. And so, hey, listen, the humble commit their work to the Lord. They admit they belong to God. They fear God. Amen. They fear the punishment of God. So we see that only humble can have their heart properly repaired, and only the Lord can properly prepare the heart. Can I get a witness? Amen. Number three, how to know your heart is properly prepared. Look at verse number six with me, if you would please. A prepared heart, A, hears the truth. Verse six, uh, by mercy and truth, iniquity is what? purged by mercy and truth iniquity is purged and by the fear of the lord men depart from evil and so we see here a prepared heart hears the truth by mercy and truth iniquity is purged are you with me listen if you're gonna have things purged in your life you've got to be able to hear the truth are you with me? You have to have Jesus said to him that have ears to hear and eyes to what? See. Listen, the bottom line is, is there's a lot of people that hear the sound of my voice or they hear the sound of the voice of truth, but they don't really hear it. And therefore their sin, their iniquity is not purged. Are you with me? And so uh, I just stop and I think about this so many times, how that you know, like Peter this morning, I was talking about Peter this morning and how that Peter, listen, he, he did, he underestimated the importance of what Jesus said in his life. And he even denied and went against what Jesus said in his life. We're talking about the man that opened the eye of the blind, that healed the lame and caused them to walk. And yet he would argue with him about what was going to and what wasn't going to happen. God, that just doesn't even make any sense whatsoever. That's about as dumb as a box of rocks as I've ever heard. Amen. That's even dumber. Our rocks have more sense. Because the Bible said if we keep our mouths shut, the rocks will cry out. 
Amen. Rocks have more sense than we do sometimes. Hey, listen, the bottom line is this right here. Listen, how to know your heart is properly prepared. It can hear the truth. It can hear the truth. Proverbs chapter number 19, verse number 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall what? Stand. The counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. God's counsel, where do we get his counsel from? Right here out of the word of God. His counsel shall stand. Listen, you say, well, I applied God's word in my life and it didn't work out. Well, you know what? You should have stuck with it because down the road, it always, 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 always does. Are you with me? And so I'm telling you right now, yeah, listen, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. Just like it says over in Isaiah, and I believe it's in chapter number 55, and it's verse number, I believe, 7 and 8, and it says, As the earth, the heaven is higher than the earth, so is his thoughts and his ways higher than our thoughts and our ways. Amen. And that is not a perfect quote. And so anyways, look at this. We, we see this. He hears the Amen. truth. 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 22, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying, the truth. Yeah. Seeing ye have purified your souls in what? Obeying the truth Ooh. through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Yeah, yeah. Purifying your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit. Listen, we're going to get into Acts chapter number 16 a little bit further. Probably the next couple of messages. Probably be the next message. Maybe the next one. preached the gospel, but he had the wrong spirit. And all the way back, if Larry Clayton is going to be with us for our mission conference, let me see him any day. And I got Brother Clayton coming. I'm excited about having him. He sent me a letter a few weeks ago, and I was looking for a mission conference down. I kept on looking at the table. And, I, and it was that day I was trying to get a hold of somebody. And the letter comes in the mail, and he's back in the state of Texas. This old guy, come on, when I say old, he was old. Amen. And listen, the bottom line is this. This man
great. I'm excited about having him here because he's going to add real work in his life. He's worked. He's also the lead in a country that is just phenomenal. He sent a letter out after Hurricane Katrina. He is boasting. Listen, the bottom line is, as we look at this and we see this, whew, I just really like this topic. And so anyways, listen, the spirit is important. Come on, Pastor. The truth is equally important. Are you with me? It has to be the right truth, and it has to be the right spirit. Come on. This is the bottom line of it. Amen. And so as we get into this, listen. They hear the truth, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. Capital S, talking about the Spirit of God, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Listen, if you're right with God and you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, you're doing it right. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm telling you something right now. This is so important. Listen, a prepared heart can hear the truth. And it's not just mental hearing. It's a spiritual hearing. Are you with me? And it all ties into inspiration of the scriptures. It all ties into having our understanding open. It's a spiritual matter. Are you with me? Listen, it's one thing to hear the truth. And get it grammatically and mentally. It's another thing to hear it spiritually. And that's why it is truth and spirit. And so listen, here's the truth. A prepared heart, here's the truth. Secondly, had this how you know your heart is properly prepared? It departs from evil. When your heart is right with God and your heart is being prepared for the work of the Lord, listen to me, verse number uh, 6b, look at what it says. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from what? Evil. Listen. Hey, a prepared heart hears the truth and a prepared heart departs from evil because of why? The fear of the Lord. Listen, I love God. I want to please God. And yes, I'm here to tell you, I, I just, from reading the scriptures and from watching people's lives, I have seen people that I know that were saved and born again go through some of the hardest things because they turned their back on God, and though they would never verbally say it, but their life showed it. And because they turned their back on God, whew, that judgment, that, that not judgment, but chastisement from God, Boy, that's hard stuff. Man, I'm telling you right now, a prepared heart hears the truth and a prepared heart departs from evil. Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Depart from the snares of death. Job 28, 28, and unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, 
That is wisdom. And depart from evil is understanding. Can I get a witness? Look at verse number seven. Not only does the fear of the Lord hear truth and does, or I mean, does a prepared heart hear truth and also it, it departs, uh, a prepared heart departs from evil, but also a prepared heart enjoys peace. Look at verse number seven. When a man's ways please the what? Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at what? Peace with him. Amen. Hey, listen, a prepared heart enjoys peace. Amen. I don't know about you, but I just, listen, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm just thankful that no matter how much the world, no matter how things are going, no matter whatever's happening, I am thankful that I have the Word. Amen. I'm thankful that I have learned to allow the peace of God to pass and walk to just to endure. All of a sudden, find yourself with a box of tissue sitting in the back of your closet crying. Are you with me? Because you have God's peace in your life. Let's go there. Amen. I'm enjoying this. Philippians chapter number uh, 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 four, if you would, please. I want you to go there. Uh, you need to see it. It's just really, uh, I came out from front of the pulpit. Bummer. Stop it. Brother Doug, I think I need you to take the uh, the lapel and change the frequency again. I think what we need to do is I need to leave it in the pulpit and need you to have it check it before and just watch and see if there's any bumping in that. Uh... You can change it from back there without changing it here? Okay. Okay. We got to make that a, a part of the the program. Give me, give me, a, give me, give me, uh, give me one of the handhelds because I just can't stand still. I got to get from behind this pulpit. I hope you don't mind. I'm feeling like preaching for a while. And so, Philippians. Uh, let's go with uh, orange or purple. Because that one's all all purple now. Which color do you want to do? No, I'm going with orange, brother. Give me the orange one, amen. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not, I, you know, I know purple's royalty and all that stuff, but to me it just seems a little bit on the feminine side, amen? And so, huh? Purple and pink, they just kind of go together. And and ladies, I, I'm just so thankful that you like purple and pink. I think it's wonderful, but just keep it off of me, amen? And so, hallelujah. And so, hey, listen, that is good preaching for our generation, Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's way too many Twinkies out there today. And so, amen, God is good. Amen. I tell you, I'm just kind of like a mule sometimes when it comes to uh, certain things. Anyways, Proverbs or uh, Philippians chapter number 4, look there with me. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, belong for my joy and crown, for so stand for fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius and beseech Syntyche uh, that they be of the same what? mind in the Lord. They're, they were having some problems. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of what? Verse number four, rejoice in the Lord what? Always, and again I say rejoice. And so how often are we to be rejoicing in the Lord? Always. Always. Amen. Now look at the next verse. Let your what? Moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is what? 
What do we say? He's at hand. And so rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation. What is moderation? It is being even, stable, not up one minute and down the next. Woo! Yeah! Glory! (laughs) The sky is falling! Even, even, stable with Christ. Are you with me? Being stable in the Lord. He wants our moderation. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. He is always at hand. If you're saved in here, say amen. God is at hand in your life. Hebrews 13, what is it? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee that we may boldly say, listen, that we may boldly say the Lord is our helper. Amen. And so as we look at this, we see this in Philippians chapter number 4. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful, full of care. That's what that that word means. Careful for what? Nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, it just does. When you've got the peace of God in your life, it passes all understanding. In the worst of the moments of your life, God's peace will sweep in and give you stability and and, and moderation. It's a wonderful experience. When something is going, and listen, I I, I just can't even begin to tell you, because one of the, the, what what people would consider to be one of the worst things to have happen is to have a house fire. And in 2012, on Devin's birthday, we had a house fire. He was 18 years old that day. And he didn't start that fire, brother. Don't you even try to do that to my son. (laughs) And so anyways, listen, the bottom line is, is this right here. Listen, if I want to say that, I can. You don't. And so anyways, listen, the bottom line is this right here. I should have been in panic mode. I should have freaked out. That would be the normal response for people. But I promise you, I started to immediately, like, panic And I whipped that car. As soon as I found out the house was on fire, we were on our way back to church from the Chinese restaurant. We had missionaries of the Rock Ages here. And we whipped it into the the parking lot across from the uh, uh, church over there on 11, uh, right there on the four corners. That church right over there, right across the street from there. We whipped it into one of those houses, driveways. And I backed, and, and as I pulled in, the Lord's like, I just felt it. It just swept over me like it was just perfect peace. God was like, it's okay. It was the most dramatic and, and, and most real experience of God's peace just sweeping across me I'd ever experienced in my life. And I was like, and I knew it automatically that it was going to be okay. It's all right. And I drove the speed limit over there. I don't even drive the speed limit when I'm not in a hurry. And it's, listen, listen, the bottom line is, is, is I drove over there, did the speed limit all the way, got over there. And everything was okay. And I stood out while the firefighters fought the fire. Devin was in the back of the ambulance bleeding like he was, you know, had cut his hand off or something. But it was just adrenaline. He had like this little tiny cut. I mean, little (laughs) tiny. It was almost nothing. It was like because of his adrenaline. He was bleeding all over the place. People thought he was dying or something. I don't know. But anyways, it was no problem. And it was just, no, I wasn't. And so, and it was all good. And I just stood there. And so, and people asked well, this is my husband. That's your husband? Yeah, yeah. Why well, are, are you not upset? Nope, the Lord will take care of it. And you know what? Every step of the way, God took care of everything. It was an incredible time for our family. It was an incredible time for our church. And so it was, an, it was an amazing thing to see happen, that peace that swept across our life as a result of this matter. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen, the bottom line is is this right here. 
when you have the peace of God in your life, it'll just sweep over like you would never believe. And so it's incredible. Look at verse number 15 of Colossians chapter number 3. I want you to see this as well. Colossians chapter number 3. A prepared heart enjoys peace. A prepared heart enjoys the peace of God in their life. Look at this now. Verse number 15 of chapter number 3 of Colossians. And let the peace of God, what? Rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye what? Thankful. Let the word of God of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the what? Lord. So let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Amen. Now you'll notice, and let. This is something that you have to allow. This is something you have to allow to take place. Listen, the bottom line is, is we can only do what we can do. Amen? And you can only do the best that you can do in any situation. And, and you have got to learn, and I have got to learn, is that you just have to leave the results up to God. Just like vacation Bible school and all this other stuff. Well, I, was, I don't know how many kids we're going to have and all this other stuff. We've done everything that we could have done. He planned the times to go out and sign up kids and all this. And you know what? God provided. And God did a work. And you know what? Listen, the bottom line is, is we were introducing people to Jesus Christ. We were introducing them to the Word of God. We were starting and planting seeds in their hearts. And you know what we believe around here, amen? We could have taken and talked those kids into praying. Yep. We, could have, we could have done that. But that's not what we're here for, amen? Now, I want to I want to see people get saved, amen? When, when Tanner told me about him getting saved a month and a half ago, man, that was rejoicing in my life. And I was like, man, praise God. And you know what? God led him to that and caused that. All, and you could just see God work in the whole situation. It was exciting. Praise the Lord, amen? He got baptized up here. That's exciting stuff. But you know what? I can't be driven by those decisions, I want everybody to get saved, and when somebody gets saved, we should rejoice. But if we get to the mindset, you show me one place in the Bible where it says that we're to lead somebody through a prayer to get born again. You're not going to find it, amen? We're, our job is preach the gospel and let them come to the place where they want God to save them. Are you with me? That is salvation. And you look in the Bible at the conversions. They have the Philippian jailer, which we're going to be looking at in a few weeks. What must I do to be saved? Amen. He had heard the singing and the praising and the preaching, and he had woke up, and he was about to kill himself. The doors were all open. And when he realized everybody was still there, Paul said, oh, don't kill yourself. He is immediately, what do I got to do? Amen. The Ethiopian eunuch was looking in his Bible, and God brought a man along. And he said, well, who is this talking about? Well, let me tell you. And then what did the man do? What doth hinder me to be baptized? He says, well, if you believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with all thine heart, thou mayest. Amen? And what did he say? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And old boy went down into the water and came up out of the water. Can I get a witness? Listen, the bottom line is this right here. The preparation of the heart is of the Lord. A prepared heart is done by God. Listen, we've got a job to do, and we're a part of that thing. And the, the fact of the matter is, the Bible commands us to do one thing. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Listen, you want peace? You've got to do things God's way. You've got to spend time in this book. You've got to get a hold of God, and you've got to walk with God. And listen, I'm here to tell you something right now. Just stay upon God until God speaks to you. Let God work. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Amen? Hey, listen, a prepared heart enjoys peace. Are you with me? A prepared heart departs from evil. A prepared heart hears the truth. You want to know if your heart's been prepared? These are the things that are happening. 
Listen, and second, next thing I want you to notice is a prepared heart. Go back to, to chapter number 16 of Proverbs. A prepared heart, look at it now, is satisfied with the profits of righteousness. Look at it with verse number 8. A prepared heart is satisfied with the profits of righteousness. Verse number 8. Better is a little with what? Righteousness. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without what? Right. What did Jesus say about a rich person? He said, it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because rich men trust in their riches. They're self-sufficient. All of their needs are taken care of because, are you with me? What does it say here? Better is a little with righteousness. Amen? Listen, we spend so much time trying to collect and gather things. And the truth of the matter is, is we should be satisfied with the profits of righteousness. Listen, the bottom line is, is this right here. Look at it. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Because the truth of the matter is, there's very few people on this earth God can trust with great riches. It's the truth. Because the more you get, the further away from God you usually will be. Go to Proverbs chapter number 30 with me. Proverbs chapter number 30. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 30. We're going to pick it up in verse number... Well, let's pick it up in verse number 5. That's good. You can't go to Proverbs 30 without looking at verse number 5. Proverbs chapter number 30. Look at verse number 5. When you get there, say amen. Every word of God is what? He is a shield unto them that put their what? Trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a what? Man, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people in our day and age that are in trouble because they've added to the word of God. And there's a lot of the, and then you go over to the book of Revelation where it says that to add or take away. And there's a bunch of people in trouble that have taken away. And I think it's people that take away is simply uh, uh, people that would preach a Bible that is not the Bible. I think they're in trouble. Look at it. You're right. Amen. Don't take away. And if you put your approval on a version of the Bible that is not complete. Can I get a witness? Look at it now. Verse number seven. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor what? Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be what? Full and deny thee. Full and deny thee. How many people can you name that are really well-to-do? that are doing really well financially that you can name that are not right with God and have no desire to be right with God because they're full. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Amen. Or lest, or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in what? vain. And there's the proof text that taking the name of the Lord in vain is not using his name inappropriately like cussing. It's actually doing things that would be contrary to what a Christian should do. Saying you're a Christian and then stealing. Right? Okay. And so look at this now. Enjoys peace. Is satisfied with the profits of righteousness. First Timothy 6, 6 through 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Mm -mm -mm. This is in Timothy. 
having food and raiment, let us therewith, let us be therewith, what? Content. And how many Christians today are just not content with what God has given them? Contentment with godliness is what? Great gain. Amen. Psalm 37, 16, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many, what? Wicked. But listen, there's a lot in the Bible about this matter of possessions and money. And it's usually you don't need it. Look at it. Listen, a prepared heart, listen, departs from evil, enjoys peace, hears the truth, is satisfied with the prophets of righteousness, and lastly is directed by the Lord. A prayer heart is directed by the Lord. Listen to this, verse number 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his what? Steps. A prepared heart allows God to direct his steps. He gets directions from God. Proverbs chapter number 20, verse number 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? That's interesting, isn't it? How can a man then understand his own way? Listen, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own ways? Listen, the bottom line is, is sometimes it just doesn't make sense. And we've talked a lot about this as of recent, just like Gideon, you know, break the pitcher with the lamp on the inside and blow a trumpet and shout. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever to win a battle. Amen. Israel, I want you to go around Jericho and I want you to march uh, 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 one time every day for six days. And on the seventh day, march around seven times and then blow the trumpets and shout and boom, the walls will come down. Does that make any sense whatsoever? That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, amen. I mean, we're talking some strong walls, and they fell outward, amen. I mean, it just doesn't even make any sense. Are you with me? That doesn't make sense. These things that God asks people to do, they just don't really make sense a lot of the times. You know, this is who your leader's going to be. Jephthah, he's an outcast. He's not very intelligent because he made a stupid vow. Are you with me? He wasn't very intelligent. He vowed whatever comes forth from my door. If you give me the battle, I'll, I'll, I'll offer it as a burnt sacrifice. Who do you think? Do you think a goat's going to come out the door? Hello? It was his daughter. And man, you examine that. Man, it is really hard to know whether or not he actually burned her as an, a sacrifice. It really is hard to know that. When you read that passage, it's not clear. And so I don't know if he did it or not, but that was a stupid vow. So he wasn't very intelligent. He's going to lead Israel, and he did, and victory happened. But you, you see, he chose him as the leader, just like God choosing David to be the king of Israel. He was the smallest of the brothers. He was out. I mean, they had so little confidence in him, they didn't even bring him in to be chosen. Are you with me? He's out watching the sheep, and the other six brothers are there. Or seven brothers. The other seven brothers are there. Are you with me? Just look, God's ways are not our ways. And so is, is directed, a prepared heart is directed by the Lord. A man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own ways? You better just, just whatever God says, you better just do it. You say, God says this. Well, you just ought to do it, amen. God says this, listen, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Just do it. Well, it, it doesn't seem to make too much sense. It doesn't make sense to give so much time to church. We're supposed to go to church more and more as we see the day approaching. Yes, yes, yes. Are you with me? It doesn't make sense to spend your time when you could be doing this or getting this done or getting that done, instead being on your knees praying and talking to God. It doesn't make sense. You spend how much time praying? Come on. And some people are like, wow, this guy wastes so much time. Uh, no, that's never a waste of time. Get God. Hey, listen, get in a hold of God and let God direct your paths. Jeremiah chapter number 10, verse number 23. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh direct his steps. 
Listen, the bottom line is, is you ought to listen to what this book says. You better do what God says and do it God's way. Well, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't need to make sense. Just obey. Listen, if God wanted you to understand it, he'll let you understand it. Can I get a witness? Proverbs 21, 30, there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. Are you with me? None. Listen, you, I'll be fine. God understands. He obviously understands a whole lot better than you do if you're using that as an excuse. God understands. Yeah, he does. And you're in trouble because of it. <laughs> Are you with me? That doesn't mean he agrees. And so as we look at this, there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Listen, a good man allows God to give the orders. A good man allows God to be in charge. That's the way the house is supposed to be set up for a husband and a wife and the children. The husband is to lead. Amen? The husband is to lead. Not the wife. Not the woman. The husband is to lead. And listen, some of you ladies that have husbands that are not spiritual and do not want to lead spiritually, I understand. You have been given the burden to bear. Are you with me? But the bottom line is this right here. You be faithful to God and you allow your husband to lead in areas that will not, that will not, listen to me, go against the word of God. If he tries to get you to do something that is contrary to the word of God, listen to me, you're not bound. Are you with me? So it, when you look at Ephesians 5, it talks about submission in the Lord. Amen? And so as he's doing things that are in the Lord, if he asks you to make him a steak dinner, you do your dead level best to make him the best steak dinner. If he says, you better give me a kiss, woman, you better give the best stinking kiss to your husband, you can give him, amen. amen. Make him want a little of what you got, amen. Make him want Jesus, amen. Listen, love him to Jesus. And it's the same thing for the husbands. Listen, the bottom line is, you be the man you're supposed to be, and your wife will have a desire to follow that because you'll treat her in such a way, not because she's worthy of it. Because, listen, the bottom line is, is I'm not worthy to be treated right. She's not worthy to be treated right. But because I am who I say that I am, are you with me? And I want my wife to love Jesus. Can I get a witness? then I ought to be the man I'm supposed to be. And so do things God's way. There's an order in the home. There's an order. Listen, the kids ought not be in charge. Amen? It ought not to be kids begging mom and dad to come to church. It ought to be mom and dad kicking the kids in the pants and saying, get to church. Amen? It ought to be that way. And listen, the bottom line is, is there, listen, I'm just going to, yeah, yeah, why not? Let's have fun. Hey, listen, the bottom line is this right here. Listen, you don't have a better way to raise your kids. The Bible way is the best way. The bottom line is, is listen, if they smart off, if they mouth off, and they talk to adults like they shouldn't, they ought to get their bottom tanned. Amen? They ought to get to know that, listen, it is not okay. Listen to what I'm saying. Child rearing 101. I'm not saying be mean, unkind, and beat them or abuse them. But listen, if you paddle your kid's bottom and they don't cry, you're not spanking them hard enough. Because the, do you spare not the rod? Hey, listen, what does it say? Spare not for their crying. They'll not die. Can I get a witness? Listen, the bottom line is, is Devin sitting in church today because I beat the bat right out of him. <laughs> Amen? And mama partook in the goods too. When dad wasn't around to do it, mama handled business. And Devin's here today, the man that he is today, with a wife like he's got today because his parents decided, I'm not going to try and use some philosophy. Time out in the corner right now. 
kids just think you're an idiot. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. And that's the truth of it. You think you know better than God? Man, I'm telling you what. If you think you have a better way to raise kids, you're dumb as a box of rocks. Mm. Say amen, church. Amen. That's the truth of it. Listen, there is one way to raise children, and it's God's way, and it's through the book of Proverbs. Train up a child. It requires training. You teach your kids from the age they're little. When those kids were little, if they got allowances, if they got birthday gifts, if they got anything, they had to tithe. They not only had to tithe, but they had to give to missions as well. Are you with me? Listen, the bottom line is we trained them. Amen? And so you got to do that. And listen, the bottom line is this right here. You don't know a better way. There's not a better way to do it. There's not a better way to do it than what the Bible says. God is right about it. And just because somebody didn't do it the right way with you and maybe spanked you out of anger, and listen, I spanked my kids angry a few times. If you think every time I spanked my kids I did it the right exact way and I never was in the flesh, I am not perfect and neither is any other parent. Get over it. Amen? The truth of the matter is he got what he deserved. And he probably should have got a bunch more. And his sister definitely should have got a bunch more. Sam, if you happen to listen to this message, you should have got beat a lot more. Hey, listen, the bottom line is this right here. You do not know better than God knows. And the Bible says beat them. Amen? And you know what? Well, you put a bruise on them. Are you kidding me? Why do we listen to this philosophy? The Bible says in Proverbs, the blueness of the wound cleanseth away evil. Amen? This bottom right here is not just to sit on. It is meant to be. God designed it that way. Amen? Listen, when man fell in the garden, I don't know if they had a butt or not, but after the garden, they had a butt because they were going to be disobedient little kids. Can I get a witness? That's the truth of it. Listen, the bottom line is, is you know when fall happened, things changed for Adam and Eve physically? <laughs> Hello? I don't know what their body was exactly like before the fall. They had a perfect body. They were created perfect. And when they fell, everything changed in creation, everything. Are you with me? And so I think sometimes we limit these things. I'm having a good time tonight. I hope you are too. And so praise the Lord. This is all free. I won't charge you a dime for it. And so the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. God, listen, you can take that two different ways. God delights in the way of a good man that's ordered by the Lord or the good man delights in the way of the Lord that is ordered. Are you with me? And so as we look at this and we see this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Are you a good man? How's your heart? Are you working on preparing your heart for revival? Are you allowing God to prepare your heart to receive what Brother Areza is going to bring from the Lord? Are you with me? Listen, this book has so much in it. There's so much things that the Bible talks about in this, in this book that is so vitally important to our Christian spiritual health. And we have got to get a hold of this. We've got a society that is trying to brainwash into thinking differently. Are you with me? trying to get us to think against God, trying to destroy what the family is supposed to be, trying to destroy what marriage is. Hey, listen, when God, hey, listen, Devin said it well, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Amen? The bottom line is, is God created a man and he created a woman out of a man's rib. Listen, are you with me? And then they two twain shall be one. That's the way God designed it. Marriage is a certain way. Listen, it's not, it, listen, you don't get to decide how things are supposed to be. God gave us a rule book, and we're to follow that book. And listen, there is, there is principles in this book for every single thing in your life. And we have got to get back to being biblical. 
Listen, this society needs to see biblical Christians. Amen. I'm begging you as your pastor. I love you. I know I've meddled a little bit tonight. It's okay. Listen, my passion for you is so strong for you to love God and do things God's way. If you don't do things God's way, listen to me, you will end up regretting it. You parents that will not raise your kids according to this book, you think you got it figured out? I'm telling you right now, you're going to lose your kids. I've seen it a hundred thousand times. You better make sure, my son, give me thine heart. You better do it God's way. You better do it God's way. If you don't do it God's way, you're going to regret it later on down the road. I promise you that. Now listen, you that are in here that are married, you don't do things the way God wants them done. I am telling you right now, there is a price to pay for not doing it God's way. There's a penalty. There's a punishment. There is, there is judgments. You cannot outsmart God. It scares me half to death to think, listen, about some of these things that we look at in life and how we handle things and how we do things. Listen, the bottom line is, is you're not going to get around it. You've got to do things God's way because there is, there is a cost for not doing it God's way. But, man, there is also a great benefit for doing it His way. And sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it's hard. And listen, you're looking at people that know how hard it is to raise kids. I know how difficult and how wearing it can be at times. There was times in Devin's life that, man, it just seemed like, man, we just couldn't spank him enough. I'm serious. And I'm not trying to embarrass him. Or Hey, listen, he is a great man. And listen, the bottom line is, is this right here. He is a hard working, good man, good husband, takes care of his wife. Listen, he even takes care of his dog and his chickens, amen. Listen, the bottom line is this right here. There were times when we were raising him, it was just like, man, is this ever going to work? Is he ever going to get this? Are we ever going to win here? Listen, but you know what? We just knew, and our preacher told us, just keep, it'll, it'll happen. Just keep doing it. Just keep obeying God. Just keep being faithful. Just, hey, listen, don't allow your no to become a yes. Don't allow your yes to become, you have got to stay after it. Well, I mean, it just isn't working. So finally, one time, a kid, half the time, kids don't know whether they're coming or going in our generation because mom says no, dad says yes, or mom says no one time, and the next time it's yes, and the next time it's, well, maybe, or it's all over the place. Listen, the first time we went into a store and this kid pitched a fit about wanting something, the first thing Julie did, grabbed him by the arm, dragged him out of the store, took him into the car, paddled his bottom until he bawled like a baby, and then said, you do it again, we're coming back out. And went in the store. If he'd have done it again, which he didn't, if he'd have done it again, she'd have dragged his butt right back out to the car, paddled his bottom, Hey, listen, if you buy a car, get one with tinted windows if, you're, if you got kids. And listen, and, and drag him back inside. And listen, and if he does it ten times, ten times, drag that kid out to the car, paddle that bottom, and do it God's way. And then all of a sudden, the next time, you, listen, you do that, all of a sudden, just like people started telling us, your kids are so well-behaved. Oh, my goodness, they're just wonderful little angels. No they just fear that thing called the rod of correction. Are you with me? And that's the truth of it. That's the truth of it. Do it God's way because I promise you, if you don't, you are going to regret it. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. A prepared heart. Hey, listen, only the Lord can properly prepare your heart. Are you with me? Only the humble can have their heart properly prepared. And then, this is how.